Hello everybody, I am Enigma. I am back here, thank you very much for tuning in, and much like a game of words with friends, while it might be somewhat complicated, it's always enjoyable, this is the Boxy Breakdown. And on this edition of the Boxy Breakdown, we'll be taking a look at the week two of the NFL season. Thank you so much if you're returning back here after your draw tuning in last week, and if you're a new visitor, what's going on? Enjoy the fun, have a seat, watch. Yeah, we're, we're family now almost. Um, it's it's very late. I will warn you guys. About five to midnight. Wasn't going to do this tonight. I was going to do it upon coming home uh, from work tomorrow. Uh, but I, I unfortunately my trip from the Poconos. Not unfortunately, I guess for me. I have a trip to the Poconos this weekend. It's been moved up, so I'm leaving right from work. I will not have time to do this and, re and record this right after work tomorrow. So that's why you might have some funky lighting going on. It's probably light over here and really dark over here and. I'm not even using the best equipment as is. However, we will progress as we go along. The lighting will get better, and who knows, maybe I'll even move from this rather large blue chair. Who knows? But that's not what we're talking about. We're talking about football. We want to get right back into it. Last week, not a good week, but I did warn everyone it was the first week of the season and anything could happen. I mean, who could have predicted the Bengals would come out and win? Who could have predicted the Bills were going to look like a monster team? Not too many. So you never know in the NFL. It's hard when you're when you're looking at games against the spread to really decide who are the good to be the good teams and who are going to be the bad teams. You need a couple weeks to really go over that stuff. Uh, so with that being said, you know how we do it here. We do the Monday night game. We do the Sunday night game. An underdog special. I give you my best bet in two additional games. Six games in all. A big six-pack, if you will. Quite frankly, if you'd like to join us, you know, help yourself to a six-pack. I don't really blame you. If you're getting ready for the game, this might be a little, a little, uh, a little tailgating at home for you with Boxy Digma. It'll be better than that, right? In any event, let's jump into those games. I'm going to give you my best bet right off the bat. My best bet this week is the Baltimore Ravens on the road. Six and a half point favorites. Might even only be six right now, but jump on it quick because I think it will go to seven over the Tennessee Titans. Uh, sure, I said last week stay away from those road teams, but a couple of those road teams who were the better teams ended up winning anyway. And right now you can make the case that this is going to be a letdown week for the Ravens. I'm not buying it. Ravens looked really good last week. Like, I'm talking like elite teams in the AFC type good. And the Titans, I mean, Hasselbeck to Britt doesn't scare me. And you have Chris Chris Johnson, and you're not even using him. They said this week they're going to, you know, use him more. But I don't know. He hasn't even been that good the last couple of seasons. So to me, I'm not scared of the Titans. They have a new coach. They're still trying to implement a new system. Take the Ravens here. Ravens look really good, and the Ravens on the road. I take them six points, six and a half, whatever it is, over the Tennessee Titans. Um, and <clears throat> with our second pick here, you're always trying to find the one constant when you're looking at games against the spread. That one team that you could depend on. That if you put in a parlay, you know they're going to win. And most case, most years, it's been the Colts. And I have good news: the Colts were again that team this season. Not like it was in the past, though. While you'd usually be able to depend on them for a win. This year, you can pretty much depend on them for a loss. They did not look good at all last week. I watched, I got it cost a little bit of almost all the games last week, and from what I saw of the Colts, they were not in rhythm at all. They do not look like they want Kerry Collins to be there at all. They look demoralized. They look like they don't know what to do without Peyton Manning, and I can't blame them. Um, Kerry Collins is also, he, he might be, maybe he doesn't got anything left. We're going to find out this week, because they do play host to the Cleveland Browns, who last week laid a big fart over at home. I mean, fart in church bed. It was brutal to the Bengals, who are supposed to be awful in their own right, and they come into your building and beat you, but I think it was opening day jitters, because if you look at the Cleveland Browns, they've only won one home opener since being reinstated as a franchise back in 1999. So they just can't do good during the opening week. Of course, that would have been knowledge that would have been more useful, say, last week, but I think I'm going to give the Browns one last chance to redeem themselves by two and a half over the Colts at home. I think the Browns take this. They should be able to beat the Colts at home, and that's my second pick. And while I usually do stay away from the road teams, I'm actually picking another road team for my third pick. Um, and in doing so, there was a couple picks I almost went with here. I think the Cowboys will bounce back. I think they'll be able to beat the Niners, so you'll be happy about that America's team. But I'm not going to be, you know, I'm not going to be ballsy enough, so to speak, to pick them, because with Romo under so much pressure, who knows what he's going to do. Now instead, I'm going to pick the Houston Texans over the Miami Dolphins. Uh, people talk about how great this Dolphins defense is supposed to be and how this is Sopranos last year and he's trying to make sure they win the division. They have no chance to win the division. And their defense got absolutely shredded by Tom Brady. 
And while Matt Schaub is not Tom Brady, he still has weapons out to the ass. So I think he's, he'll have no problem shredding the Miami defense. And I think the Texans, who are a team possessed to win that AFC South, are going to win this game pretty handily. Uh, they're only three-point favorites. They probably should be more, even though I know Miami pretty much hung around with New England and had chances to win that game. I don't think they are that good. I just do not like Chad Henney as a quarterback, and I really like the Texans this year. So my third pick, Texans by three in Miami. My underdog special of the week, and there's a couple ways you can go with this too. I think that, uh, you know, you might want to, a lot of people probably want to take the Carolina Panthers because of Cam Newton, but they're playing the champs. <clears throat> a lot of people maybe want to take the Chargers because they don't, they don't think they should be touchdown underdogs to the Colt, to the Patriots. I'm not going against uh, Tom Brady after last week. No, no, no. Instead, my pick is going to be the Kansas City Chiefs. Now, please, 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 do not press X on the top of that box right now. No, 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 don't do it. Hear me out. Last week, yes, they got destroyed. They got destroyed by a team I don't think is very, very good in the Buffalo Bills. This week, I think they'll rebound. They still won the division last year, and I'm not jumping on the Lions bandwagon just yet. I know a lot of people are, but nine and a half point favorites? I mean, you have a great defense. You got Megatron. You got Matt Stafford. But nine and a half points? Have we done enough to become nine and a half point favorites? I don't think so. This game will be closer than uh, a lot of people think it's going to be. Um, also, the Lions didn't destroy the Bucks last week. So while the Bucks, I do think, are better than the Chiefs, I don't think the teacher, Chiefs are a slouch. Even though I lost Barry for the year, even though they went through the coaching changes I went over in my preview, I still think the Chiefs hang around here. And while they may not win the game, I think it will be pretty close. So, excuse me, my underdog pick is the Chiefs. Then we get to the Sunday night game. And already I can tell you, you could probably hear sirens. You could probably see big red X's up on your screen. Don't touch this game. I'm going to because it's part of the gimmick of this little boxy breakdown that I go through every Sunday night game. But this is a game that could be very easily be a trap game. This is one of those that the odds makers love. And they, do, they love making the Sunday night game because if you lost everything, you try to make it up on the Sunday night game. And if you win everything, why leave when you're hot? You try to ride it over to the Sunday night game. And the odds makers know this. So two and a half points. Eagles favored over Falcons. Falcons got destroyed last week. Eagles totally looked pretty good against the Rams. They're also the dream team. They should win this no-brainer. And I'm even going to pick them. That is my pick. But all I'm saying is that place is going to be rocking. And they are going to really want their team to pound Michael Vick and get to him in their building. I apologize for the noise. Ignore it. We're in the zone right now. And I believe the Falcons very easily in the Georgia Dome can beat Michael Vick in his return to that place. He'll be motivated, Vick, but you're going to have an entire city motivated that it might be enough to pick the Atlanta Falcons. I'm not, I don't know this. I'm not going to do it, but it might be something you want to do. And because it is so close, I say you maybe stay away from that game. So my pick in the game is the foul, is the Eagles rather by two and a half. Then we move to Monday night. It's tough because I am a New Yorker, as many of you know, and I'm a big Jets fan. I'm not a big Giants fan, uh, but I do know many people who are. My girlfriend is, my uncle is, a lot of people that I know are Giants fans, and the Giants I don't really have any problem with them. It's not like a Yankee Mets thing. I think that the Giants are a fine, you know, organization. But my gosh, did they absolutely suck again in Washington last week. And this week they're playing a team that's expected to win their division in the St. Louis Rams in their building in probably a game that is the most that they absolutely need to win. This is the most crucial week two game, I think, for any team in the league, <coughs> excuse me, save maybe for the Cowboys. The Giants better win this game against the Rams. The Rams are beat up. Sam Bradford is not 100%. Steven Jackson may not even play. Danny Amendola is out for the entire season. So you have the Rams heading into Giants uh, to MetLife Stadium. Sorry, I'm still weird. I don't know. To MetLife Stadium to play the Giants. Giants are favored here by 6.5. I can't give the Giants, and I know New Yorkers right now want to throw a tomato through your screen. Don't do that. You don't want to break your screen. They're pissed off. How can you not pick the Giants here? I think the Giants will win the game. I can't give them 6.5 points, though. That's too many right now. I think right now... I'm going to go with the Rams to cover the spread. I think the Giants probably win this game, but you can't, after the performance they put up last week, you can't honestly pick them to come out here and 
blow the roof off the Rams. Rams have a good defense. They easily hung in there with the Eagles, at least during the first half last week. So we'll see what happens this week. But I pick the Giants. I mean, the uh, Rams to cover. So to recap my picks, my best bet of the week is the Ravens by six over the Titans. Then I have the Co uh, Browns heading into Indianapolis by two over the Colts. Then I have the Texans by three in Miami. My underdog special, I am taking, well, technically my Monday could be an underdog too, but my underdog special, let's follow along with the gimmick. My underdog special this week is nine and a half points for the Chiefs to the Lions. My Sunday night pick is the Eagles with a little asterisk, just as, asterisk, I don't even know how to say the word, but you know what I'm saying, to maybe stay away from this game, Eagles by two and a half though, over the Falcons, and my Monday night game, I'm picking the Rams to cover, six and a half, to the New York Giants. That's all I got for you this week, we went through the entire thing, I'm sorry if I went long again, I think I was a little bit better this time, maybe not 11 plus minutes, uh, that's all I got for you this week, guys, and thank you so much, as always, for tuning in. Uh, if you want to leave a comment, feel free to do so. Uh, you know, tell me you like me, tell me you dislike me. I did see a like last time. I like seeing that. Hit like. It's not even that much effort. Um, and uh, by all means, follow me on Twitter, twitter.com slash boxingnigma, B-O-X-I-E, Nigma. And uh, thank you guys very much for tuning in. I don't have a Facebook yet. Maybe I'm looking into that. We'll see. But uh, have a great weekend. Enjoy some football. Make some money. And I am Boxy Enigma. You be well.